Well, hello there. And this is Auntie. And I am here to do my review of My 600 Pound Life, Season 10, Episode 10, Margaret's Journey. Are y'all ready to talk about Margaret? <laughs> Let's get started. Everybody needs a sweet old auntie. Everybody needs with a woo woo and a boop boop. boop. Auntie Ben Bye. You can't make this up. Now you know that these are some crazy motherfuckers. Yeah. So why? Well, hello, everybody, and this is Auntie. And if this is your first time being here, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And to all of my new subscribers, thank you all so much for joining the family. And to all of my nieces and my nephews who have been here with me for the long haul, thank you all so much for your continued support. I promise this weekend I will be taking down the Christmas tree. <laughs> and you all will not have to see that again. Okay, until next year, around the same time. Anyway, y'all, if I had to rate my 600 pound life, season 10, episode 10, Margaret's story, I would rate this mofo a B. <laughs> Let me know down in the comment section where you will rate um, this episode. Let me tell you, Margaret was just a, a, a little bit um, too much for your dear sweet old auntie, okay? But we're going to try to do this. We're going to try to get into this. And I got some tissue on deck in case I get to, you know, laughing and my nose get to, you know, draining and all kinds of stuff. Um, I will not <coughs> guarantee you that I'm going to see your comments. Um, if you send a super chat, thank you in advance. I appreciate it. You don't have to do it, but you do. Y'all, let's get into Margaret. Okay, so Margaret was a 35-year-old baby. When we see Margaret, Margaret is in the hospital, girl. <laughs> we meet Margaret and her mama, Millie, honey. They Millie Vanillian up in the hospital. <clears throat> Allegedly. Margaret was in the hospital, child. She thought that she was having a heart attack or some kind of issue with herself. And so her and her mama goes to the hospital. Now, I'm assuming that the mama was at work. And so Margaret was by herself. We hear Dr. Now discussing the fact that she was in there. They had to transport her from one hospital to another one because the hospital that she was in was not specialized nor equipped to deal with somebody who weighed 750 pounds. So they had to transfer her to the hospital where Dr. Now was under, okay, works. So Dr. Now was like, you know, I don't know what I'm about to walk up into <laughs> with Margaret. <clears throat> 
ain't never seen this, never smelled it before. But I'm going to go ahead on up in this camp because they're going to transfer her over here for an expert. So Margaret is laying up in the hospital, honey. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know how that girl head was sitting up on her shoulder, but I saw no neck the whole entire time that we were introduced to Margaret. But anyway, Dr. Now comes into the room. He has already informed us that there's nothing wrong with Margaret other than the fact that her BMI is 129. Now, Dr. Now said that's the biggest one he'd ever seen. Okay, I think that's what he said her BMI was, like 129, 130. <laughs> Honey, let me tell you, when it's over 100, it don't even matter. But he said this was the biggest BMI he'd never seen. And the patient, he said she 5'4". Okay, she a half inch taller than your auntie. And if you've ever met your auntie in person, I'm sure. Okay? <laughs> and so, you know, he's like, she's 5'4". And she's a hundred, I mean, 750 pounds. So Dr. Nowenzinger comes into the room and he's meeting Margaret for the first time. And Margaret is sitting up there, honey, and will laying up there, honey, will prop up there, honey, <laughs> on that hospital bed. And the miracle worker has walked in the room as far as she is concerned. Now, as I said, Margaret, honey, is 750 pounds. So Dr. Now comes into the um, hospital room and he needs to do an initial assessment <clears throat> on our girl, Margaret. So he comes in and he tells Margaret that, you know, he, you know, the, what's going on with her or what she thought was going on with her in the issue, but that she has an infection up in them legs and they're going to treat that infection really what he wants her to do is stay up in that mofo and lose a little bit of some lose some weight but you know he got to always throw some some dupe in the game <laughs> y'all know dr now be throwing some dupe in the game so dr now you know tells her you got an infection in your leg we got to treat this infection that's going on in your leg boo boo and then after that, you know, we're going to release you to go back home. He said he could put her on a controlled diet and, you know, get some stuff done for our girl, Margaret. So, he, you know, he asked Margaret, you know, of course, you know, about her enabler, which is her mama. Her mama ain't there because, you know, the mama had to go to work, I guess. And so he doesn't really know the dynamic of what's going on with Margaret at this point. Okay, let me put my glasses on, y'all. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you so much, Fog Dust, for the four ninety nine dollars Super Chat Auntie looking as lovely as always, giving me Lola Falana <laughs> vibes. Thank you, boo. Thank you. You know, you got to do something. And it's all this snow we done got. Thank you so much, Sassy Fab 2811 for the $5 Super Chat. I've been waiting on this live all day big margaret ain't had on a stitch of clothes the entire episode okay <laughs> okay sassy i ain't never seen so much you know what behind stay nasty rank at girl you, you sassy you about to get me started child thank you so much herbie for the 9.99 super chat hi auntie i got my blunt <laughs> <laughs> and drink ready for the show. Love you. You look amazing. Thank you so much, Herbie. Love you, boo. Don't get too high now, okay? <laughs> too high or too drunk, whichever one kick in first. Okay, Herbie. But so, you know, she, you know, she's laying up in the hospital. Doctor now is about to release her. And, you know, and so now we, you know, we meet Miss Millie. Miss Millie is in the room, honey, and she's just enough by herself. The two of them together, honey, was a complete and total disaster, in my opinion. And so, you know, Dr. Now is, you know, telling her, you know, she's lost some weight and all that. You know, he was able to get some weight up off of her. The infection is gone. And so now they're going to release her. And so Dr. Now says that, you know, because you have come up in here, you 750 pounds, you're going to be a candidate, you know, for me to work with. <laughs> I 
I said, wait a minute, what? Hold on, pause. Pause. Pause, 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 pause. I know she did not just break out crying like this. This was the most crying that I think I have ever seen on my 600 pound life or any other show for that matter. This girl sat up there and cried about everything. I said, she's a baby with no vocabulary. Here we go, auntie. Buckle up. Buckle up for this. Oh, So her mother come over. Oh, you just made her day. You just made her life. You a miracle worker. Oh. 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 <laughs> I said, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. What's going on? What's going on? Ooh, 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 ooh. Y'all, we knew from there. Thank you so much, Tessa Sutherland, for the 1999 Super Chat. Y'all, we knew from there that we was on the ride, didn't we, y'all? We knew. Okay, here we go. This ride about to be bumpy. It's about to be more than what we bargained for. Let's just go ahead on and, and, and look at this together. Y'all thinking what auntie going to say? I'm thinking what y'all going to say in them comment sections. <laughs> y'all go ham. Have a good time. Just don't be disrespectful and arguing with each other. Because I'm sure that y'all got more to say about this damn show than what I have to say about Margaret. Let's go ahead on and get into this book. So we see Margaret back at home laying up in the bed butter ball naked all 750 well now she done lost weight i can't remember what she got down to but she done came down into the you know see doctor now got her like in like at right at the door of 600 right so she's sitting up there laying there honey in all her naked glory They was fuzzing out that joint. They was, <laughs> it just wasn't enough blur that they could put up on it. <laughs> y'all know that y'all was seeing dark colors, orange colors, brown colors, red colors. I said, what in the foolishness is going on with Margaret? Margaret had this blue shirt on, honey, and the blue shirt came right by, by right here. We never seen that pulled down. We ain't see it snatched to the side. We ain't see it tied up. We ain't see no draws. Young, all we saw was a bunch of blur spots where they was trying to blur this chick out. And I'm going to tell you, if you ain't seen the episode yet, everything I'm telling you is true. The people that have seen it in, in the comment section can tell you that auntie is not lying. I'm telling you right now, the whole time all we saw was big Ron Norris butt cheeks. I mean, she looked like a rhino up in that mofo. That was dribbling like I don't know. I'm I'm telling you now the the um Harlem Globe Trotters ain't had nothing on the dribble and the bouncing that was going on with Margaret's behind. And Margaret needed to be ashamed of her mofo self with all of that big fat glory. Margaret ain't had no shame up in her game. And I'm surprised that her mother wasn't just tying a sheet around her neck like an apron or, or like a bib to, to, to hide her daughter's nakedness. But they are evidently are so accustomed to seeing it. And the mother got a boyfriend. I know damn well that Margaret ain't in there. They got Margaret laying honey up in the dining room. They didn't put a... <laughs> Bitch. They don't put a curtain 
up around Margaret's room, honey child. She's sleeping behind some blinds and some and some curtains, honey. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, they were the next day. They look like they have been, them curtains look like they have been up there for Margaret for over a hundred years. Margaret had three, four dogs. The dogs was rusting up on her, honey, like she was a cotton freaking dog bed. I said, how in the world are them dogs going out to poop? Because I know Margaret ain't doing it. Margaret is not doing it. How in a boot is them dogs going out? I'm just trying to set the scene for y'all. Outside of the curtains, honey, was a safe that's up. <laughs> she had one of them Treasure Island up in the uh, up in the bank on Chevy Chase Bank. Cotton freaking safes sitting at the side. I'm talking about the ones that you put your combination up in that mofo and you got to twirl it around like you're the captain of somebody's ship. You don't want it up with, with the five points on it. You got a brrr, that, you know, that and brrr, and come back on that. Mofo, and brrr. Now, this safe is sitting right outside of Margaret's curtains in the bathroom, honey. And I'm trying to tell you right now, I don't know what kind of toilet that they got that is holding that girl up, what kind of foundation they got in that house, but they need to build every house with that same foundation and every toilet got to be the same because I'm going to tell you right now, Margaret was a big girl, honey. I'm Oh my God. Y'all, her bed was sitting up. It looked like somebody had taken the best of all lumbers. I'm talking about 24 by 24 uh, um, car, uh, uh, um, wood columns and it had the bed sitting up underneath that mofo and i know that all up in between you know the beds where margaret needed to be i know boo that there was some center blocks there then they had this so pee looking ridden mattress that was sitting on top of it and margaret was just out in all her and glory like everything was showing that everything god gave margaret was out on display for everybody to see and i'm telling you margaret was some hundred and fifty Thank you so much, Mocha, the cap for the $2 super chat. Auntie, I love you. Hook me up with Dante, please. Girl, bye. <laughs> Girl, bye. Okay, I think your picture, you was black. Uh-uh, Dante ain't looking for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super chat. Let me tell you, this girl was sitting up there, y'all, with all her stuff hanging out of. So Margaret Honey began to tell us her sad story. Margaret said that her she was neglected as a child. She said that her father was 1,000 pounds and that he would eat up all, all the food up in the house. If they even said anything about a crumb, a, 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 a corner of a bread, a piece of chicken, he would go off on them and their mother would tell them to hush and don't say, hush, little babies, don't say a word. Daddy's going to eat up this home and bird. Let me tell you, they couldn't say anything about food. They said that the father, the mother said that the father wanted her time all the time and would take her away from her kids. If he went to the doctor, she had to go. If he went to the pot, she had to go. So eventually mama ended up leaving her kids. Okay. And Margaret said that she ended up going with her grandparents house. And this was her daddy's parents. And when she was with the daddy parents, they was doing the same thing with the food. And so she was, you know, always hungry. But she said she got a chance to live with her aunt Caroline or Carol or whatever her aunt name was. And Carol wasn't like that. Carol said, y'all can eat all the food y'all want up in here. So she began to eat all the food. She said when she had anxiety and she had to deal with her evil, mean, nasty ass daddy, that she would just eat and eat and eat and eat. She mentioned that she had two sisters. But I don't know whether or not the sisters is like Margaret, but I'm going to tell you right now, honey, Margaret. So Margaret said that her life was in bliss because her care, her aunt used to let her eat any and everything that she wanted to eat. And so she was just in bliss with her. And she said, but then next thing you know, when she got into high school, the auntie died on her. 
And so, you know, that was sad. And so I guess, you know, she had to go back. Eventually they said that, you know, the daddy was taking so much food and, and making everybody life unhappy and everything because he was a nasty mofo that the mother said, you know what, that's it. I'm going to go back and get my kids. The mother said at one point she had to leave for two months and leave her babies behind. And I'm just sitting up there saying, honey, you put that man in front of your kids. Miss Millie. Miss Millie, I know you want to blame that mess on that man. I know you do, Miss Millie. Miss Millie, I know that you think that you was downtrodden, honey, and you was doing the best that you could for your man. Stand for my man. That's where you was, Miss Millie. Because I'm going to tell you right now, ain't no way in the world, Miss Millie, I would have put anybody in front of my kids. I would not have done that, Miss Millie. Now, Miss Millie, you know you was wrong. Thank you so much, Devin Wright, for the $2 super sticker. Thank you, boo. Miss Millie. You ain't had no business doing what you did, Miss Miller. You didn't have no business doing it, Miss Miller. You neglected your kids for that man. It's okay, Miss Miller. It's part of your past now, Miss Miller. But Miss Miller, you got to stand up in it, honey. You got to stand up in it because your daughter is a rat. So now she has abandonment issues. She already, she when she was a young child, she was eating so much that she was that she was already already had diabetes. No family history of it. Just eating. Little girl. Diabetes type 2. From eating. Every time she said she got a chance, she would go in there and steal food. So here we got this girl with these huge abandonment issues. Living with her mama. And she says she just eat and eat and eat until she can't eat no more. Miss, let me tell you something. Margaret was a hot tail mask. So Dr. Now decided that he was going to take her on as a client, bring her in and, you know, work with her, right? So they went, you know, got in the car and everything. Now, hold on. Now, this girl went into, met Dr. Now because she was in the hospital because of her legs. This chick could not walk from, from where I'm sitting to the Christmas tree. This Christmas tree. Without, uh, 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 from here to this Christmas tree. And her mama want her to walk out the door. Now, she done got two different walkers. She uses a chair to walk with. This girl is in bad shape. Her legs already had the infection and the dust cleared up. But I'm going to tell you that the, her legs, her legs about big as me. Y'all, I'm telling you right now, I'm not lying. Am I lying, y'all? Her leg, one leg. About the big, she got stuff hanging off of it, lipedema, lipedemas for days. No, not for days, for months. No, not for months. She got lipedemas on her for years. Y'all, oh, okay, I thought it was some. <laughs> y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all this girl is in. No shape to do anything. And she's only 35 years old. Her mama is her enabler, hands down. Her mother talked to Margaret like Margaret was a baby. And Margaret acted like a baby the whole entire time. You know, when a baby needs something and they don't have the vocabulary to articulate it, so they cry. Margaret did that book the whole episode. So we got to get Margaret in the van. So to get Margaret in the van and everything, she gets the doctor now office. Now they got to get a special wheelchair for her because she can't fit in the wheelchair that Dr. Now has. And you know Dr. Now got the biggest wheelchairs in the world. She could not fit in it. She had to have a special wheelchair. So they wheeled her in there. 
she got her feet on the ground. I would have said, lift your, <laughs> lift your feet up. I can't push and pull at the same time. So they managed to get her in there. You know, the lady comes up and everything. Margaret. So Margaret goes on back there and everything. Her mother will her back there. She got to get on the wheel, on, on, on the scale. Now, mind you, the last time she got weighed was when she was in the hospital. So she is getting up on this cotton freaking scale. And usually we do all back that thing up. No, honey, it wasn't no back that thing up. It was the wheels on the bus go round and round. Round and round. Round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round. All the through the day. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all to do darn day. Margaret got up on that conference scale. Her mother said, you know, you know, you got to let me go. <laughs> you you got to get up on here and you got to let me go. So Margaret, you know. Oh, me stay right there. Bitch, I'm hot. She couldn't back that thing up. She got up on that. Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I said, bitch, are you kidding me? It stops at the magical number. She's 600, what was she, 689 pounds, I think she was. She hurry up and get up off that joint. She... You know, so her mother got her. She got to go back to the doctor down room. You know, her mother pushing her and she... In a wheelchair. The mama got her sliding back, pushing forward. Sliding back, pushing forward. I said, bitch, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be able to cover this show. So, you know, Dr. Down decided, you know, he gonna come up in the room. Hey there, Margaret. How you doing? Wait a minute, hold on. I'm doing okay, Dr. Now. So yeah, last time I saw you, you know, you was all jacked up in the hospital and everything. Um, you, you, how, how you been doing? I've been doing good, Dr. Now. But then a mama jump in. And every time Dr. Now talking to her, the mama running her mouth. I said, mama need to just sit back and shut up. Let this grown woman talk for herself. So Dr. Now tells her he's going to let her be on the program. Okay. But she's going to have to fly right. Now he had already given her the program information when she was up at the, you know, over at the joint. So, of course, you know, they do their little talking and everything, and they see see Margaret on out the door. Margaret, you know, finds out that she gets to be on Dr. Now. <laughs> Dr. Oh, Dr. Now, you made her day. You just made her day. We're going to do this, girl. We're going to do this. So they get them back at home. Because I got to cut to the chase with Margaret. It's so much drama happened with Margaret. I'm going to have to summarize. So Margaret goes, they get Margaret back home, and Margaret is now supposed to be on this program. Margaret mama is telling her that she got to exercise because 
Dr. Now said she's going to have to learn how to be mobile. Now, as you all know, she ain't been mobile. Now, he told her that she got to do physical training and she got to see a, a therapist. Okay? The therapist should have been at the top of the list. And so they got these therapist women that come, I mean, these PT, uh, 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 physical um, trainers that come over. Um, no, they wasn't that. They was... Um, Yeah, they were doing physical therapy. So they came over to the house. They knocked on the door. Knock, 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 knock. I don't want them in the house. Now, the women is the women's is standing outside of the house. I don't want them in the house. They don't do nothing but be pushing and pulling on me and yanking on me. Well, you know you got to do this. You know, you have, you have to do this. So, you know, the women is outside of the door. They listening to all the stuff that Margaret is talking about them. And so, you know, Margaret is in there. No, they're not coming in. Tell them to come back. Now, the mother had indicated that she had tried to get it rescheduled because Margaret been, you know, putting the people off and everything. And the lady said, look, Margaret. <laughs> the lady is yelling through the door. Look, Margaret, we, we, we just rearranged our schedule. We changed a whole lot of stuff to come here. Now, open up this gap door so we can come in there and do what we got to do margaret so you could get the surgery with dr now because if we don't come up in it you ain't getting the surgery <laughs> okay thank you so much angel for the 9.99 super chat i can't breathe <laughs> So next thing you know, the mama come get, how y'all doing? Y'all come on in. Oh yeah, you damn right you changed your mind. When they told her she couldn't get that in surgery, she changed her mind like that. So they got her, you know, they, they come on in and everything. Margaret is but a ball naked. Do you hear me? I said, these cotton freaking people see everything. They don't know when they walking up in these houses what they going to see. Margaret is 689 pounds. She has lymphedema hanging off of everything she got. Every, every limb on her body has a lymphedema on it. At least 10. She's laying up here, butt up, ball naked in front of these women. They came up in their professional dinner <laughs> hi margaret yeah how are you so do you have you been exercising mm -hmm. so let me see do you have any pain put your arms out you got any pain no she's naked she is naked they got blur spots everywhere TLC had so many blur, blur spots, honey, that they had to go and borrow some from another network. This girl was butter ball naked in front of these two women, and they handled her professionally. Dogs everywhere. Her mama, she's naked at 35 years old. You don't have the common sense that God gave you to put something over yourself when company come in the house. You know, when you're in a hospital room, pull the curtain back or something. But Margaret is laying up there, honey, in all her glory. That was more than a birthday suit. I don't know what kind of suit you would call that. Put that down in the comment section. Y'all tell me what kind of suit that was. But let me tell you, that girl was so cotton freaking. Thank you so much, brown girl, for the five dollar super chat. It kills me when Doctor Now tells her she smells bad in a nice nasty way. Did she own any shoes? What shoes? She barely had feet left. Her feet was barely, she barely had feet. She got no damn shoes. What shoes? Thank you, boo, for the super chat, brown girl. 
The ladies is telling her about the PT. Are you hurting anywhere? What about your back? No, just my legs. My legs are hurting. But you still got to get up. So when they left her body there, her mother was like, get up. I ain't got time for this foolishness. Get up, Margaret. You're going to do your exercise. Margaret like, get up, Margaret. It's time. I ain't got time. Come on. Get your, get your, get your, get your thing. Get your, get your, get your, get your walking. Come on, Margaret. Margaret, get up. Okay. Okay. Scooch. Scooch, Margaret. You got to scooch. <laughs> Margaret, scooch. Scooch. <laughs> Margaret, scooch. Get your walker. Come on, Margaret. Come on, Margaret. Get your walker. Uh, come on, Margaret. Come on, you're going to have to do this now. You want this surgery with doctor now? You're going to have to get... you going to have to do it. you going to have to do it. Ooh. Let me tell you something. <laughs> the rest of the show. Let me tell y'all. That's all we saw. Margaret was going across that flow with that cotton freaking. With that walker. And Chow TLC had us looking at them. Hold on. Let me see. I can't even. I can't. Hold on. I can't even. That thing. <laughs> Oh, 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 o
Girl, you barely walk. I want you back that thing. Huh? Girl, it smell like dirt. I want you back that thing. Huh? So she got over to the piano. When she got over to the piano, she be scared to sit down, right? So Margaret would like this on that ass. Once Margaret got over there, Margaret would like, y'all got to watch my eyes now. Her mama said, now go on back on the other side. You ain't finished. Margaret said, mama, shut the hell up. <coughs> Her mama said, you go walk. Her mama said, you go walk back on the other side. I've been letting you get away with the tunnel. You walk it back on that other side. Let me tell you, I was hollering. I was hollering. Margaret was so cotton freaking mad at her mama. She didn't know what to do with herself, right? So Margaret got to take all of that junk that was up in her trunk back over to the other side. Boom, when she got back over to that other side of that cotton freak to that bed, Margaret would like that on her. Bitch. <laughs> well, <laughs> scooch, Margaret. Scooch. Honey, Margaret had to get herself. See, you did it, Margaret. You did it. Scooch, Margaret. Scooch. I said, Lord, TLC, you mean to tell me that you had to show us all this? Like this was the process that you needed to take us through in order for us to realize that Margaret is a big girl. But Margaret mama went in there and said she put her uniform on. Margaret better have her ass back on the other side of that room. The mother said she was sick of Margaret. Margaret was sick of the mama. Margaret got the crying and all kinds of stuff and spitting and choking and, and just a mess. A mess. And I'm telling you. Thank you so much, Natural Beauty, for the four ninety nine dollars Super Chat. Auntie, you had me crying over here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Natural Beauty. Thank you so much, She Crab Diva, for the $30 Super Chat. The blurry out of the body parts man worked his behind off on this episode. <laughs> Absolutely, She Crab Diva. That's what I said. They had to borrow their blurs out from another network. That's how much they was blurring out on Margaret. Y'all think I'm playing? I'm telling you. I'm not even playing. I ain't exaggerating nothing. So Margaret goes back over to the other side of the room. She was supposed to have, you know, she's been saying that she's been eating right and all that. She's supposed to have an appointment with Dr. Now, and she missed her appointment, honey. And Dr. Now, she said she, she told Dr. Now, bitch, I'm not coming. Dr. Now said, you, you, you may not be coming, but I'm going to call you. You know, Dr. Now took it with and honey dialed up on that anonymous call line, honey. So you don't see Dr. Now come up on the phone. He be using them. <laughs> Dr. Now be using, you know, them little phones that, you know, them little track, them little track phones. So Dr. Now calls her, honey, and get in contact with her. Hey, this is Dr. Now. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hey there, Margaret. This is Dr. Now. 
Hey, Dr. Now. Um, you had an appointment with me. You know you missed it, right? Yeah, I missed it. <coughs> so, you ain't had a decency to call me and tell me you was missing it? I'm sorry, Dr. Now. I, you know, my mother not here. He said, well, I need you to come to the appointment. She said, I can't come because I ain't got no ride. I don't have no car. I don't have nobody to bring me. So Dr. Now said, you could have talked to Metro Access. <laughs> he said, you ain't got Metro Access over there. <laughs> she said, yeah, but I couldn't get one. He said, you need to get in, get over here, doctor, uh, uh, with, with um, Metro Access. He cussed her out. Doctor now asked her, Are you losing weight? You look like you're losing some. She said, Yeah, I'm doing real good. I'm doing real good. He said, What you eating? She said, I ain't hardly eating nothing. He said, Oh, okay. Well, you know, you need to get your ass on up in here. I'm going to give you 30 more days to get your ass back up in here. And when you come back up in here, I need you to have lost some daggone weight. So she was like, All right, but my mama ain't here right now. So I, I ain't going to be able to come. But I'm doing real good. So now they got to put her in the van. They got to take her, her mama, got to take her back because Dr. Now was like, I, I need you here. Thank you so much, Beverly Conley, for the 1999 Super Chat. Auntie, you do Dr. Now better than Dr. Now. Thank you, boo. So he gets that her family gets her there. It's time for her to weigh. She come on up in there. Margaret. How you doing, Margaret? Go ahead on and get on the scale. It's going to scale. Girl, you're looking good. Won't you back that thing up? Margaret, you look like you lost some weight. Won't you back that thing up? Go on, big girl. Won't you back that thing up? You's a big girl. Won't you back that thing up? Back that thing up. Back that thing. And back that thing up, Margaret did. Margaret backed that thing up on that scale. She like, hurry up. I ain't gonna be able to last too much longer. Hurry up. Come on, go, 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 go. Come on, go, 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 so, you know, the scale go bling. Margaret has lost 120 pounds. 120 pounds. Margaret is ecstatic. Her mother put her up in that wheelchair. They drag her on to the back. Drag her, push her. Drag her, push her, pull 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 her, okay? Drag her, push her, pull her, okay? They get her back in the room. She can't hardly get in the door, but they get her in. Mama manages to get her in. So Margaret's sitting in there, everything. She happy. She down 120 pounds. Doctor now comes in. Hey there, how you doing, Margaret? I'm doing excellent. Good, good to hear. How you doing, Mom? Doing good. <coughs> So, you know, they go through the Rickham row. Dr. Now tells her he, she lost 120 pounds. And that, you know, he's going to put her in the program. Oh, ho, ho, ho. She burst out in tears. Her mama like, yeah. He said, now don't go ahead on and get cocky. Because I need to do, you know, some tests on you. Make sure that we can go up in your stomach and everything. And everything is functioning correctly. So don't get too happy about this. So long to the short of it, she leaves. She comes back for a second visit. During this visit, she only lose five pounds. Miss Millie is in there running her mouth. Millie, um, 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 Margaret and Millie are saying they don't know how this happened. She ain't been doing nothing but eating one damn salad a day. Dr. Now said, 
Mm -mm. She said, the only thing that changed during the doctor that's different is that she, instead of having ranch dressing, she have a honey mustard. He said, it must be a gallon of honey mustard that she eaten. He said, if she was eating the way that she said she was eating, she would have lost about 100 and 200 pounds. Margaret starts crying. Dr. Now said, I don't want to hear that crying. I don't care nothing about your tears. I don't care nothing about your excuses. I don't care anything about none of that. None of that. You're not eating. He said, you got to be eating at least 4,000 calories. So the mother said, well, you know, you just had that protein drink in the morning and the protein drink in the evening. Dr. Now said, what protein drink? She been drinking protein drink. Doctor now said, and who the f told her that it was okay for her to have a damn protein drink? Who the hell said it was okay? Nobody. He said, then why did you giving it to her then? He said, I ain't got time to be playing with you. Your time is short. You know, Doctor now will cut your time off and all. <laughs> he cut your tail. He said, shit, it get the no. I don't care anything about your tears or your excuses. If you had been eating the way that you said that you were eating, you would have lost at least 200 pounds by now. I'm very disappointed in you. So if you want to be a part of this program, then you need to eat what I told you to eat. She said, I don't eat nothing that don't fly and don't swim. He said, I be damned. you eating everything that's crawling around and walking on its face of this earth. But if you want to be part of my program and you want to get the weight loss surgery, then damn it, you better do what I tell you to do. You don't have no business eating no protein shake. Thank you so much, Smokey Mix, for the $10 super chat. Dr. Now went gangster on the ass. He sure did. He told her, the mother, you the damn enabler up around this mother. Dr. Now cussed them out. Millie went back home. Millie was crying and went back home, honey, and got to, got to chop, chop, chop it. And next thing you know, honey, she got Dr. Paradise at the house because she had not been doing the physical therapy. He told her, he said, you ain't even been letting the people come in and do the phys physical therapy and you ain't been doing the mental therapy. He said, you're going to do what I tell you to do, damn it, or you're not going to get this program. You're not doing my program. So she she starts letting the people come in with the physical therapy, and she lets Dr. Paradise in. So Dr. Paradise comes in. She's got the blue shirt on, but she's still open in the bottom. You in front of a whole grown-ass man. So Dr. Paradise comes in and he's like, hey there, how you doing, Margaret? She's like, hi. He says, so um, tell me about your childhood. How was your childhood? It was hell. He said, I see you already struggling with it. Yeah, you know, she got a lot of stuff going on, you know. He said, so, you know, you know what was going on with your your childhood you know um she said i was bullied my daddy was a monster and at the same time she talking the mother talking so she gets to cry he said well who was there for you nobody so the mother was like you know it's okay millie oh nobody was there for me Nobody was there for me. So the mother reaching over Dr. <laughs> Dr. Paradise looking like, what the is going on up in this blickety flickety? So, you know, she's going off. The mother is talking. Dr. Paradise, he ain't going back and forth. He don't know who to listen to. He said, well, your mother was a protector. Your mother seems really protective. You know, just in the last two seconds, she can't keep her mouth shut about what's going on with you, Margaret. And so she was like, she wasn't there. Margaret, it's okay. You know, I what you know, I wasn't there, you know, but this is my baby. He said, but she's not a baby. She said, This is my baby. She's gonna always be my baby. He said, Well, that's the problem. Y'all need to separate from each other. You need she needs to get a little bit of more independence. <coughs> 
Now you try to take, you just trying to kill me. You first you say I'm gonna take the food away from her. I'm gonna take that comfort zone from me. Now you're saying that you're gonna take my mother away from me. You're gonna take another comfort zone away from me. I'm dying. I'm dead and I'm done. 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 Dr. Dr. Paradise was like, calm down. You know, the mother grabbing her hand and everything. I'm done. Get out. Get out of my house. Dr. Papa was like, you know, you know, this is good. And I'm not trying to take anybody. He's not trying to take me away from you, baby. Just chaos and confusion. Doctor, she's got the rolling in that bed. I'm done. I'm done. Next thing you know, she gets up out that bed. Her butt <laughs> is completely naked. Like no underwear on her at all. I got to keep my clothes together. No underwear. Dr. Pepper jumped up and was up against the safe. She goes into the bathroom. The mother's like, I knew that she was going to get upset. I know how her anxiety is. <coughs> he said, this is a good thing. This is progress. He said, look at her getting out the bed by herself. It's a miracle. <coughs> she got up off that chair. Went in that bathroom and was like, I said, these people need an award for even fucking with Margaret. The physical therapist and the mental therapist, psychological therapist. Whatever you want to call Dr. Paradise. They need an award for dealing with seeing her. When she went to go and see Dr. Now, he told her, you need to work on your hygiene. So you know she was stinking. Anytime Dr. Now then went past your way to your hygiene, your ass is stinking. Now, he told her that her ass was stinking in a good way. Not in a bad way. In a good way. He said, you need to work on your hygiene. So you know she was rank. You know the house stink. You know the dogs ain't going to the pot. She sat there and told Dr. 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 Um, um, Papa, I mean Paradise, that her and her mama, when her mama leave, they sit on the phone and talk for seven hours. That's how dependent she is on her mother and her mother on her. Seven hours. I wish I would talk to somebody for seven hours in an eight-hour day. But she knew that she needed to do this. She knew that when the last time they was there, Dr. Now told her to wash her ass and wash behind her legs. He told her to take care of her hygiene. He told her to stop drinking them protein drinks if you want to get this daggone thing done. She goes back to Dr. Now's office. She's lost 30 pounds. Now we can do something. Dr. Now has, you know, goes and sends her to go and have herself checked. And she's stanking again. She rank stanking. The cotton freaking leg, the infection is back. So Dr. Nancy, I know if I send her back home, she's going to fall off the wagon. So I'm going to go in here and lie. Dr. Now came up in that month and told her, <coughs> your infection in your leg is back. We're going to have to keep you in the hospital and treat you. I'm going to keep you here for 30 days 
while we treat your your hygiene and your stinking ass and your stinking ass legs. Because she won't take care of herself. The mother said that it usually takes her an hour and 30 minutes to get to the shower, to shower and get back to the bed. And now they're doing it in 30 minutes. Half the time that you get into the shower, you're probably showering every bit of five, five minutes. You're nasty. So Dr. Now said, I'm going to put her, keep her in this hospital so she don't gain no weight back. Because I know if I send her back home, she going to fuck up. Thank you, cousin A Angela, for the five dollar super chat. If you don't work on your hygiene, you can die. Any infection can kill you. Okay. Yes, it did, Miss Sonya. And I'm trying to break it down because we already had an hour. Hi, boo. Happy New Year, boo. Long to the short of it, he kept her in that cotton freaking hospital. She thought she was having problems with her gallbladder, and really it was, was her stinky hygiene. Dr. Now kept her in it and did the guy bas gastric bypass surgery on her 30 days later. Dr. Now was in the business of saving Margaret's life. Margaret did do <clears throat> a lot of work in order to lose 120 pounds. And Dr. Now was pleased with that. But he knew that if he sent her back home, that it was case closed. He knew it was a done deal. Margaret got the weight loss surgery. We saw Margaret at the end laying in the bed recuperating and recovering from her surgery she looked nauseous she said she didn't feel good she was still you know trying to get over it i don't know what margaret's story is going to be but i know that margaret mother had gastric bypass surgery according to her seven years prior <clears throat> and she had lost a lot of weight so it seems like when Margaret's mother and father were together, that Margaret's mama was fat right along with the 1,000-pound father. I don't know what's going on with her other sisters. She never said whether or not they was obese or not. But I'm going to tell you right now, Margaret was a hot tail mess. If you have not seen this episode, you have got to see it. There's so much I could not cover in this episode with Margaret, we will be out here for two hours and we ain't doing that. But let me tell you, I'm hoping that Margaret is down. Her goal was to go down to 200 pounds. I'm hoping that she's there. Thank you all so much for being here tonight, y'all. This is the end of my review. Thank you to everybody who super chatted. Thank you for your conversation in the, um, in the um, chat. Thank you so much to my moderators who always keep the room nice and safe i love you all to pieces y'all be blessed and be safe out there in them cotton freaking um, streets love y'all